What's up, Prince Squad? I'm back with another video, and today I'm going to be discussing a few things about screens. I've had a few people asking me what mesh screens I use, how do you line up your design correctly so that you can print it, you know, so that it's in the correct place so that you can print it onto your shirt. So I'm going to try to answer those questions today. So if you're interested in the answers to these questions, just stay tuned. All right, the first thing that I am going to talk about today is lining your design up correctly when you're burning your screen and the way that you figure that out it's a couple of things that you have to do okay first off depending on your press and the size of your screens the location of your design may vary you know depending on those things but the the main thing that you want to take into account is the correct position to print down from the collar is about four fingers down, which is equivalent to about three inches. So um, what I usually do is I take my screen and I line it up onto my press and I'm going to do a close up so you guys can see it better. Okay, right here I'm going to just take this screen since it's one that I already have on. And when I take, when I have my t-shirt, I'm just gonna pull a t-shirt from over here. And this one already has the print on it. I'm gonna flip it over on the other side so that I can kind of show you guys a little bit better. But basically what you do is you put your, when your shirt is on, press. And as you see right here, this one has a design in it already, right here if you, if you guys can see and the design begins right here in the press so right here where you see the design is going to begin in the press you want the uh you want this to be about four fingers down from the collar of the shirt so the way that you can do that is right here i have my uh i have my shirt right here lined up and i'm going to take the screen right here and i am putting down my hand right here and right where my hand is at on the opposite side of the screen I can feel where my fingers are and I see that they're about an inch they're about an inch from here and I'm going to try to show a better angle so you can check it out they're about an inch from here so about right here is where I want the collar of the shirt to be so when I line it up I will pull the shirt out to here and make sure that it is staying down on my press and it should be about four fingers down so when I go into the dark room I know that I'm going to want my design to start here so one thing that you can do to make sure that this is correct is take something like right here I have a yardstick and you, you could also use like a t-squared or something like this so since I know that's where I want the design to begin I can line it up at the end and I'm gonna try to line up on this side at the end of the screen right here and if I go straight across right there and I'm gonna uh, bring it right here to the inside of the screen that'll actually be better but as I bring it across here and if you had a smaller ruler it probably would work a little better I'm gonna get my t-square it because I, um, the way that I line mine up, I've just been doing this for a while, so I kind of know what to do. But I'm going to get my T-squared since it's a little shorter to kind of try to show you guys. All right, so here's my T-squared. And starting from here, you can see this, that'll be one inch if I line it up just like this. So right here, I'm going to line it up. And as you see, the top of this design right here that I was showing you guys is about four inches or so from the top of this screen so I know that I need my design to start about four inches or so from the top of my screen so that uh, once I line everything up it's going to come out right. So now we're going to go into the dark room and I'm going to show you how I line up my film onto the screen so that I can get the correct position. Come on, let's go. Okay, so my dark room is kind of small, so I'm going to do my best to show you guys 
how to line this up and and actually i'm gonna um instead of doing it in my dark room because i have actually broke my tripod my mini tripod that i usually use while i'm in the dark room so that i can put it in different positions to give you guys better angles so i'm uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take a transparency film that i have already printed and i'm going to take a screen that I have that does not have any emulsion on it and I'm going to show you guys how to find the correct position to put it in for for your press and um, the other thing with that is when you do put it in that position uh, one of the things that I do with my press you know so that I can line it up when I'm printing multicolor designs but what I'm basically going to show you today is how you know if you're just starting out you're probably not doing multicolor designs so this is the um, process I'm going to show you so that you will know where you should place your screens in order to print them the correct in the in the correct position down from your collar. Okay, I have my screen right here and I have my transparency film right here. I also have tape and a T square so that I can show you guys how to line it up in the correct position. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Now, in my dark room when I am, um, when I'm lining up the screens, I'm going to pretend that this is the edge of my glass, that this table is the edge of my glass. Like the way that I do uh, to make sure that it's straight is I line this up to the edge of the glass. And before I ever line it up to the edge of the glass, I already have tape like on all, all four sides of it. Like so, I tape it right here right here and the so I take each of the four sides of it and then I make sure that it is lined up on the edge of the glass right here because I know that the glass is a straight edge and that it's going to be straight and the next thing that I would do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of put it to the side just a little bit. So right here, I know that my design needs to be down to the four inch mark. So I would take this and line it up and make sure, and, and my, my um, exposure unit has pegs on the side to line it up. So I would first stick it against those pegs to make sure that it's straight. And then I would find the four inch mark and I would place it down right here where this, where this uh, top of my design begins. Then I would remove that and I would take the sides where the tape are and I would make sure that they adhere. Now the screen that I'm using is a 40 mesh screen. So, or a 30 mesh screen actually, a 30 mesh screen. So it may, the tape may have a harder time sticking to this but I'm gonna um now once I secure the tape on each of the sides then I would lift it up and it it's having a hard time to adhere to it but that's basically how I would know where where my design is supposed to be so if you look at it right here if I measure it from the top from the top of the screen right here then you can see that the that top letter right here, the top of the design, is actually on the four inch mark. So you can see right there, it's the four four inch mark right there. So I know once I burn the image into, I know once I burn the image into my screen, it's gonna be in the correct position to print correctly. And uh, one of the other things, depending on your press, you may need to center it you know, based on the sides also, like if you have a press, like my press, I just slide it in at the end of the screen right here. But if you have a press that, that you slide it down and you lock it against the screen on the sides, you may want to make sure that it's actually centered. And that is basically how you position your design on the transparency film so that you will print it in the correct place and hopefully that was helpful to you now i'm going to move on and kind of talk a little bit about screen mesh for you guys because i've been having some people with questions about what screen mesh i use 
and, and I'm taking it that they're unsure of which screen mesh that they should be using for whatever printing job they're doing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, right here, I have all of the screens that I carry, all of the different meshes that I carry. Uh, right here, I have a 30 mesh screen. And this one is basically used for glitter. And I don't know if you guys can see on there how wide the or how far apart the mesh is or whatever. But this one, the 30 mesh screen would be used for stuff like glitter or maybe some puff, puff ink or something like that. And this is this will be used for like the true glitter inks. Uh, it probably could also be used for the shimmer inks, but you can use up up to a, a 110 mesh for the shimmer inks. Right here is a 110 mesh and it has an image in it, but you can kind of see right here how close the, um, the mesh is. But um, the 110 mesh will be used for like the thicker inks. Like if you're printing white on black or if you're using high opaque inks, um, and a lot of people say that this is the basic screen, you know, the pretty much all around screen. With this one, you would not be able to print very detailed designs. I mean, you can have detail, as you can see right here, this design has a little bit of detail, but you would not be able to print anything highly detailed with this, such as half tones, because when you're washing your screen out, everything will wash out because the mesh is too far apart. And you know it's not gonna it's not gonna um, allow you to do that, and um, and like with with this thirty mesh right here, you wouldn't be able to print detail either. The only thing you would be able to print with this thirty mesh is the big block style designs, because the you know the mesh is far apart from each other. Okay, and. Right here I have the 160 mesh, and 160 is pretty much my basic mesh. I pretty much use 160 to print everything. I mean, I even use 160 to print the white ink and stuff like that. I have done halftone printing before with the 160. It wasn't really um, much of a halftone design, but um, I did use the 160 mesh to create a halftone design. But you know the the um, dots were just a little bigger in that design, and I don't know if you can be able to see on here because it kind of has some ink. But that's kind of an up close view of the mesh on this one. All right, and the final screen that I do keep is the 230, and the the 230 can be used to print half tones. And it can be used when you want a softer hand on your prints. And uh, the 130 mesh can hold a lot of the 130. The 230 mesh can hold a lot of detail. So you can do fairly detailed designs and half tones with this. And the 230 mesh, if you're using like um, white ink or high opaque, high opacity inks, it's going to be a little bit harder to push it through the screen. I mean, you can get it through and you'll probably have to do more layers, but it's going to be kind of hard to get it through. And this screen is actually yellow. If you if you can see right here, this is the actual color of the screen. And when you get up to the higher meshes like 230, they're usually yellow. And they have several different meshes that you can choose from, but those are the ones that I use and that I keep in stock. And um, I didn't say on this one. This one is the 160 mesh right here, and it actually I use it for pretty much printing any any type of ink, any type of design, and you can also print you print the white inks and the high opacity inks also. But um, yeah, the 160 is the basic mesh that I use, and that's most of the time when I'm printing. That's what I'll be using, and um, the the 110. You know, I a lot of people say that's the basic mesh, but because it doesn't hold as good of detail as the 160, I use the 160. And also, I, I didn't even mention this, but my screens are 20 by 24. I don't know if it's labeled on here anywhere, but they're 20 by 24 inch screens. 
all of my screens are the same size and I, I use the 20 by 24 because I think that's what works best with my press. I can go larger with that on my press because I have the HD heads, but if you just have the same press that I have and you don't have the HD heads, you're not going to be able to print with the larger screens, but basically for the size of the palettes that I have, the 20 by 24 screens work best for me. And um, right here, this is one of the older screens I had when I started out. And as you can see, it's damaged right here. But this is a um, 230 mesh screen also. And as you can see, it's also yellow right here. This is a 16 by 20 screen. And I don't know if I will even be able to use it on the press that I have right now. These are the screens that I used when I first started because the press that I had was unable to take a bigger screen. This video has quite a bit of information that I hope was helpful to you. If I missed anything or if you have any additional questions, be sure to leave them down below and I'll get back with you and answer them as soon as I get a chance. And um, if you liked the video and found it helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you're interested in any of the products or equipment that I use, be sure to check the description box below. And don't forget, I do live streams on Sundays at 3.30 Central Time, so be sure to tune in for that. If you want to become part of the Print Squad, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be part of that notification squad. And that way you won't miss any videos because sometimes I will do a live if I don't have a lot going on. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Print Squad out. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever forget your golden. I will find the light in your soul.